what's really cool is all principles are microcosms of each other. So everything really just keeps proving everything else because truth is simple. It's lies that are complicated. And so if you learn to look for lessons in everything, sometimes you might just find them. We're home. We're home. First off, I just, I, I just want to get y'all. That was, you see what I'm saying, Myron? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to work on my curiosity to find, like to, when I read or when right. I see or when I'm right. trying to understand how this applies to me mm -hmm. in, a, in a very relatable way. Because mm -hmm. you didn't, you didn't create that. You just discovered I discovered it. it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious, bro. One, one, one other thing, which you shared something with me, and mm -hmm. I never forgot it. Oh, well, cool. I can't wait to hear what this well, is. Well, I forgot exactly how you put it, but... It's okay. I'll remember how I put it. That part I got. And it almost seemed like... Um, I don't know. It didn't seem planned. It seemed like freestylish, and it was just so, I was just blown away. But I think this is probably my first class okay. with you, so it was really good. Anyway, so you were going through the different, um, what's it called? The different industries. Oh, the different economic eras. The, diff, the different economic eras. Yeah. That one conversation has literally changed my life really? because I, I, I always, I'm always now looking for where we are now, where we are. Yeah. Cause when people are in the industrial industry, they didn't think, Whoa, we're in the industrial industry. Yeah. We better get ready by going into the distribution age and like right. making some stuff to distribute all the stuff we're making. Right. Can you walk me through that one more time? Just so we haven't recorded this time. <laughs> I don't have the footage. <laughs> I uh, love you, Shan. So you're a beautiful dude. <laughs> so, um, yes, I can do that. So, I call it the history and mystery of wealth. The history and mystery of wealth. Yes. You can't solve the mystery of wealth until you understand the history of wealth. And wealth is a mystery. For most people, it is a mystery. Because if it weren't, they'd be living it. You think so? Oh, I think there are a lot of people who just don't have any, they don't have a clue. They believe it's somewhere it's not and believe it's not somewhere it is. <laughs> I'm going to use that so bad. Huh? I'm going to use that so much. <laughs> I was just telling you're you that. You're hilarious, bro. That. You're hilarious. Okay. Um, so, so from the beginning of time to like the mid-1700s, the economic infrastructure of the world was based on agriculture. Mm. In order to have agriculture, you need land. So the people who own the land own the wealth. If you own land, you were wealthy. If you didn't own land, you were poor. Mm -hmm. Well, if you were born poor, you were poor your whole life. If you were born rich, you were rich your whole life. There was no middle class. You were rich your whole life unless somebody who was stronger than you came, conquered you, conquered your land, land and took your land. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Right. Um, and they're like, wow, dude, we're doing all this hard work. Why don't we make some machines? Oh, that's a good idea. And so we went into the industrial age, mid-1700s to like the mid-1900s. Cool. We, got, we, made, we made, invented all kinds of stuff, trains to like transport stuff and, mm -hmm. and you, you, all, all the stuff had to be built. Um, I, I think I'm, I, I'm not positive about the whole concept of specialization was invented by Smith and Wesson. Um, because, so, so like p businesses that made guns, mm -hmm. they would have one person, they would have six different people and they would all build a gun that week. Let's say they could build one gun a week. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think I'm pretty sure it was Smith and Wesson and Smith and Wesson said, you know what? Why don't we do this a different way? I'm going to have you build a barrel, you build a stock, right? And had different people building each part of the gun. And they went from building like six guns a week to building like 30 guns a week mm -hmm. because everybody, but when everybody was building their own guns, none of the parts were interchangeable. Right. But when everybody just focused on building one thing, now all the parts became interchangeable. And so that's the whole, that's the whole concept of, of um, where, people specialized in making one thing in manufacturing came from. Oh, wow. And then Henry Ford did the same thing in the automotive industry he got from the gun industry. And that's why cars began to mass, mass production. Not, not, not uh, yeah, mass, that's how mass production came about. Yeah. Where you find that? Where you discovered that? I forgot. That? I don't know. Somewhere. I don't know, bro. <laughs> I read a lot of stuff, watch a lot of documentaries. I don't even remember. 
I just thought it was fascinating. Anyway, um, so in the, indu in the industrial age, machines equal wealth, and the people who own the machines own the wealth. Here's what's really cool. The, the industrial age was a very permission-based society because machines were very big, very clunky, very expensive. You had to go to the bank and borrow money to build, like to buy machines or build machines. And so um, um, if you, let's say the people, somebody owned a record label, they owned the machines to record the records. Mm -hmm. So if you thought you could sing, if they didn't think you could sing, it didn't matter how good you thought you could sing, it didn't matter how any good anybody else thought you could sing. But they have- They had the equipment to make the, the records. Correct. Or the, and they had the equipment to put you on the radio. And the, so the people who owned the machines owned the wealth. And, you know, and it was very permission based and you had to get permission from the people who owned the machines. Got it. And then the people on the machines created machines to manufacture people to work on the machines called schools and colleges. Whoa, manufactured people. Yeah, they manufactured workers. They didn't manufacture people, they manufactured workers. They took people who were people who were creatives and turned them into drones to just do a job. <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay. I read that somewhere. Oh, that's that's real. That's why. Like schools were, I, I heard schools this, were tell me if this is true. Yes. So they're working at factories or something like that. Like kids were getting hurt. So they sent the kids to school to learn how to well, work. Well, kids graduated from the eighth grade until the Great Depression in America. Mm -hmm. They graduated eighth grade. But there were, so, there were no jobs. When did school start? Or well, that's when the school start, but I don't, I don't this system that's been created. It's so jack sideways. So better than, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I will tell you this. There's a book that I would recommend highly. It's called Weapons of Mass Instruction by John Taylor Gatto. He was the five-time teacher of the year in New York, in the state of New York, five-time teacher of the year. And he became totally disillusioned when he realized that the purpose of being a school teacher was not to teach math. I think that maybe he taught English, English or math. He said, I became disillusioned the day I realized my job was not to teach math, but my job was to teach school. Mm. And yeah. the purpose of school is to manufacture employees for businesses. It's not to teach your children to be smart. Hmm. He said, think about it. In school, they teach you that nothing is important. Well, how do they do that? You, it's the only place that you will ever work in your life where you work on something for 45 or 55 minutes and then a bell rings and you to close your book. You don't care about that anymore until tomorrow. At the same time. <laughs> and you go do something else. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right? It's like, it, do, it doesn't make any sense. And they're pro, they, the, reason, the reason they use bells in schools is because that's oh, what they yeah. used on the assembly lines. Uh. Lunchtime, ring a bell. Okay, go to lunch. Ring a bell again. You come back from lunch. Like the whole thing was programmed for a stimulus response. Anyway, that's a different conversation for a different day. Um, <laughs> so mid 1970s, uh, I mean, 1700s to mid 1900s, we were in the industrial age. Mm -hmm. Well, the industrial age, change happened a lot faster because we had technology, we had leverage. So then we started making more stuff than we've ever made in the past, but we couldn't get it to everybody. So the, the, Agriculture age created the need for the industrial age. The industrial age created the need for the distribution age. And that lasted from the mid 1950s to about 1978. Distribution. Yes, so we had, so distribution, malls, infomercials, multi-level marketing, direct sales, all of that stuff, um, shopping centers, all of that, st discount stores, all of that stuff was created between the mid 1950s and 1978. All of it, Walmart, Kmart, malls, infomercials, all that stuff was created during that time frame hmm. because we were manufacturing so much stuff that needed to be distributed. And people, people who got wealthy in indu industry got wealthy faster than people in agriculture. And people who got wealthy in distribution got wealthy faster than people in um, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But then this guy named Sam Walton said, you know what? I don't like finding out we running out of toothpaste when we running out of toothpaste. Mm -hmm. I want to know we run out of toothpaste early. So he went to IBM and recruited programmers to write inventory software for him, for Walmart, so that he would know when something's getting low on the shelf so he would know when to go buy it. Mm. And so 1978, the personal computer was, invent was created and developed and sold. And so we went from the distribution age to the technology age, in which techno how equaled wealth. In the distribution age, outlets equaled wealth. So now you got technology. And back, if you can remember, 
maybe you're a little bit too young for this, but maybe not. Um, back in the 80s, everybody wanted to go to school to become a computer programmer. Why? Because Michael, jo- Michael, Michael Dell, Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, Bill Gates, all in Time Magazine, Billionaire Boys Club, right? Mm. Computer programming. Then, 1978, 1994, we went into the information age. Hold on. So, technology I mean, age. I mean, ni- technology, technology age. 1978 to 1994. Right. And in, in, in this... We started using technology to make distribution more efficient. That's it's it's interesting how each economic era created the thing that replaced it. Hmm. And every economic era, every subsequent economic era, has been shorter than the previous economic era until the economic era that came era that came along in two thousand three. Hold on one second. Distribution age. Yep. Technology age. Then technology age. Then information age. Then information age. Nineteen ninety four. To about 2003, about nine years. Right, but the information age. The internet. Started with CompuServe and Prodigy. And then turned into bulletin boards and the internet and Yahoo and Google. Oh, and, and this is the time yeah. frame where we can go and get information. Right. At, the fing- at our fingertips. Yep. And the people who created the infrastructure, because you can't own the information. Who owns the fact that the sky is blue? Everybody and nobody. But what they made the people who made the money in the information age, it's the first economic era in the history of the world where you didn't get rich from owning something, you just got rich from controlling it. The information. Controlling the flow of the information. What are the companies that got rich from controlling the flow of the information A bunch of in the them. time frame? Um, Google, Yahoo, to just to name a few. Yeah. And what's interesting is affiliates for those same companies. There were people, I knew people back in the 90s who were making $200,000 a month with Google Ads, Google AdSense pages, I think that's where, where they just made websites and all they did was put affiliate links on them, like for Google AdWords. Mm-hmm. They just put Google Ad links on them. Every time somebody clicked on a link, they got paid. I mean, I knew people making $200,000 a month back then, in the 90s. Wow. Yeah. Okay, 2003 something happens. 2003, we went into what I call the techno info edutainment age. <clears throat> Techno info, info edutainment, edutainment, edutainment age. age. Now, I made that up. In 2000, okay. It's finally, I made something up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you discovered something. Okay. Okay. Explain this, era. we're still here? No. No, so that lasted until 2008. Okay, walk me, to talk, talk to me about techno the 2003 in, to 2008, because I was just getting out of high inf- school. Techno info, oh, thank you. I was my first year of college, 2003. <laughs> Wow. 2008. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna make you feel old. Watch this. <laughs> 2008. I'm a server at the Cheesecake Factory. And I'm trying to understand mm-hmm. what's happening. Techno info edutainment age. People who knew how to use technology to create education, uh, to create information to educate in an entertaining way. Those are people who control the wealth. Hmm. Independent record labels. Jeff Foxworthy. You might be a redneck if. Mm-hmm. Um self-published authors, just all kinds of. I, so this is like the beginning of even uh, artists and rappers becoming. All of that. Russell Simmons. Yeah. All that, yeah, yeah. They learn how to use technology. Oh, I don't need these big machines anymore. I can do some on my computer? Oh, bro, it's a rap. This is like the tail end of Jay-Z going from being a rapper to. Right, exactly. Yeah. Now, you can make, here's what's cool. You can still make money in agriculture. You can still make money in manufacturing. You can still make money in distribution. You can still make money in technology. You can still make money in information. You can still make money in techno info edutainment. But the bulk of the wealth, of all the wealth in the world, moves when a new era starts. But you said 2003 to 2008. You said 2008 something happened. Oh, yeah. Are you making this one up too? No. This is a real thing. Oh, this happened in 2000. I mean, 2003. 2003. What, 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 was, what was the thing that changed the world in 2007? Do you remember? What was the thing that changed the world in 2007? <laughs> I remember where I was. I, I don't think. I was oh, in Hawaii. Um, no, no, that's not that. Um, I it's, don't it's know if I was ubi- paying attention. It's, be- uh, it's become ubiquitous to communication. I know, because I remember the presentation. Okay. Um, uh, uh, don't say it. Okay. It's... um. When I things like come, you get excited. To, huh? I like watching you get excited. That's 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 an that's a whole fun time in itself. When okay, so because you gave the example of um, it's um, 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 the App Store. I uh, see. That's two thousand eight. 
What? What? Yes, yeah, I'm saying 2000. What, 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 what was invented in 2007? Uh, iPhone, iPhone. That that's iPhone, it. The iPhone. 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 Okay. IPhone. And then 2008, the App Store. Yes. The App Store was the beginning of the partnership age. The partnership age. Where multi-billion dollar corporations for the first time, in a big way, Amazon was already doing it. But Apple, my Apple was the company of companies. They kind of still are, right? They said, if you will create apps for our App Store, we will give you most of the money. We'll partner with you. We will partner with you. So now you can go make millions and billions of dollars from a multi-billion dollar corporation without being an employee by partnering with them. Mm. For instance, I'm in partnership with Amazon right now, right? I used to have an app on the app store. I paid some money off of it, but I'm in partnership with Amazon. And I just like, I, I just created, a, I mean, I've got a couple of eBooks on there, but I created an Amazon storefront. Mm -hmm. I don't do hardly anything with it. It pays me a couple thousand dollars a month. Hmm. Yeah. That on there? Oh, that little book link you just, I caught that. There you go. I caught that. Mark. There you yeah. go. Right? And last month they paid me like 1950 something dollars for recommending books to people that I'm going to recommend to them anyway. So it's not yeah. like I created it. It's not like I said, oh, I'm going to start recommending books so I can make money. I was already recommending the books. So now I'm just getting paid for something I already do. And if I wanted to take it to another level, I could unbox everything that comes to my house from Amazon and do an unboxing video and I'll make even more money. Just send them to myrongoldnamesy.com. <laughs> so wow. it's called being an Amazon influencer. Have you ever heard of that concept? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I never heard of it before. I was at a mastermind. Some your Amazon influencer was at me. And then they showed me how to do it and I did it. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Okay. So the partnership age lasted from 2008 till probably 2022. Something else is happening. I know this next one. You do. The podcasting age. Oh, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Right? Like, I mean, we see what's happening there. Okay. <laughs> I love podcasting. I do too. Um, but okay. what happened in 2022 that never happened before? Do you remember? What, what it's got to be this artificial intelligence That's thing. it, bro. The age of artificial intelligence. The AI age. It's crazy. It's scary. It's scary. It's scary, but it's it's unsettling. It's unsettling. It's got sure. it's got unsettling potential. That's a fact. Yeah. But what you're saying is some people are gonna become billionaires because of this age. Some people many people already have. Some have become millionaires. Like my point is one of the primary reasons people are broke is because they're attempting to make a living in the past. Mm. We, there's a reason we don't tell our children, okay, when you grow up now, here's what you do. You go buy a plot of land, you start a farm, <laughs> right? There's a reason we don't do that. You go buy a big building and you start a manufacturing company. There's a reason we don't tell them that, right? But unfortunately, we still tell our children, well, if you want to do well in life, you got to go to college, get a degree. Well, the only reason we tell them that is because that's what we're expected to tell them. We haven't really thought about it. I'm, I mean, I, I've thought about it. Most people haven't thought about it. If you had little kids, would you let them go to There's school? There's no universe in which my children would ever go to school in this environment. There's no universe. Like, I'm talking about like middle no school. No universe school. in which, like, I, I feel like I did, my wife and I did relatively well as parents. We did what we knew. Um, from, in my opinion, my daughter might disagree with this. Did you go to school? Did you but go to high school? The, but, but the biggest mistake I ever made the Half biggest mistake it? the biggest mistake I ever made as a parent, in my opinion, was letting my children go to public school. The second biggest mistake was letting them go to a school at all. <clears throat> Yo, I like this conversation because I'm telling my wife, I don't want my kids to go to school. What? Okay, but see, something to think about. You have enough money. Hire a teacher to teach your children at your home. Mm-hmm under the supervision of you and your wife and hire them to teach them what you want them to learn instead of programming them with all the garbage that's going on in the world. Anyway, that's a different conversation for a different day. That's a really good conversation for today. Well, but here's a, here's a really good conversation for today. If I may. Please. Can I share with your listeners what I perceive to be the biggest difference between like rich people 
and the poor and middle class. Don't share them. Don't share with them. Just tell me. <laughs> a, yeah. I, I don't. I don't really want the You're hilarious, bro. <laughs> you are hilarious. Okay, so I'm going to share it with you, and they sh can listen if they want to. If not, they can go. So, the primary difference between okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you how they feel before I tell you the difference. Okay. Poor people and middle class people feel like everything's expensive. So if you're like, I can't believe the price of gas, I can't believe the price of milk, I can't believe the price of eggs, I can't believe the price of houses, cars, blah, blah, blah. It's probably because you pay for things with money you've exchanged your time for. Mm. Okay. So, and by the way, you can't get it back, the time. So when you pay for things with money you've exchanged your time for, you feel like everything's expensive because you feel like you're paying for everything with your life because you are your time your, like, your exact life. time is the stuff that life is made of okay <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody makes think about it if somebody makes fifty thousand dollars a year <laughs> time is the stuff that life is <laughs> <laughs> you're hilarious that tickled me i'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> clearly <laughs> um, uh, uh, so if you're you make $50,000 a year, okay? Mm -hmm. And you look at a $50,000 car, you're not asking if it's worth $50,000. You're asking, is this worth a year of my life? Or better yet, because of interest, is this worth two years of my life? Mm -hmm. Right? Interest in inflation, is this worth three years of my life? <laughs> right, and it keeps going, right? And so you look at everything, and every time you get ready to pay for anything, it gives you cause for pause because you're spending your life to pay for it. Mm. As, uh, you didn't even ask me if I was ready for that. Oh, were you ready? I don't know. Okay, now. I think I can handle it, but there are some people oh, listening. Oh, they can handle it. I, know, I ain't worried about them, they all right. Them my, those are my peoples, they all right. I mean, you gotta think. So the investment of the possibility to grow a business, start a business and grow it, it's gonna cost my life. No, the possibility of going to your job every day is costing you your life. That's true. You're selling your time. Now, a business, see here's the problem most people have with business. They treat their business like a hobby and they have no success. Or they treat their business like a job and they have some success. So what do I mean? What I mean when I say they treat their business like a hobby, they do it when they feel like it. Mm -hmm. What do I mean when I say they treat their business like a job? They expect because they spent the time that they should get the money. <laughs> Businesses don't pay you because you spent the time. <laughs> Not at all. They pay you because you produce the result. Mm -hmm. Okay. So poor people and middle class people feel like everything's expensive because they pay for everything with money they've exchanged their time for. They feel like they're paying for everything with their life because they are. Mm -hmm. Like wealthy people, we pay for things with offers according to our creativity. Like I pay for everything according to my creativity. So I want you to think about what I just said, according to my creativity, which means, and it's gonna sound like a flex, but it's not, it's an illustration. So I'm not flexing, I promise I'm not flexing. No, 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 we won't okay. take it that way. Okay. I flew here from Tampa today on a private jet and the round trip is probably gonna be taxes and everything, 25 grand. Okay, right. That cost me no more than this bottle of water. That cost you no more. That than trip cost me no more than this bottle of water. Every, see, when you pay for things according to your creativity, everything costs the same amount. Everything costs the same amount. Mr. My Rolls Royce Mr. Gold cost Gold. me the same amount as this bottle of water, <laughs> David Chance. Mr. Golden? That I, flight here I was, today I was cost me the same 90 minutes, bro. amount I was there. I'm here. as I'm, this bottle of water. In fact, I'm going to drink some of it. <laughs> since I paid for it. <laughs> okay, t tell, me, tell me how you come to that, that thought process. Okay. Because we pay for things according to our creativity. Now, I want you to notice, first of all, I didn't say you pay for things with our creativity. I didn't say out of my creativity. I said according to my creativity. Okay. Why? Well, if I just said I pay for something with my creativity, 
as soon as I use my creativity to pay for it, I'd have less creativity. If I said, say that I, one more time. Say that one more if time. I said I pay for something with my creativity, when you pay, if I pay for something with money, when I pay for it with money, I have less money after I paid for it than I did before I paid for it. Right? Okay, I agree. So I if agree. I pay for something with my creativity, I'd have less creativity after I paid for it than I had before I paid for it. <laughs> I didn't pay for it out of my creativity. If I pay for something out of the money I have, I have less money. Mm -hmm. If I pay for something out of the creativity I have, I have less creativity. But here's why the rich really get richer. Oh, that's a whole cool, that's a whole video. The rich get richer. Remind me to do that. <laughs> why the rich get richer? Oh. So good. Because every time I decide to splurge, and buy something for myself or for my wife that's outside of my purchasing comfort level, which is getting harder and harder to do. Mm. <laughs> it makes me richer, not poorer. Mm. So here's, what, here's how I discovered this. And I did discover this. Okay, okay. I like when you discover stuff. Bro, I had two back-to-back -back commercial flights on we will inconvenience you at our convenience airlines. Okay. American Airlines and Southwest Airlines. It doesn't matter what you name them. They're all the same name. We will inconvenience you at our convenience, okay? American Airlines lost my luggage that had my suit in it when I was flying to Texas to speak at a conference. Okay? okay. They lost my luggage, okay? For three months. Really? Three months. It was a direct nonstop flight. Okay, cool. So the next one, I went to, went to Cincinnati on my birthday or the day before my birthday, I'm coming back. My son had this beautiful experience set up for us. We're gonna go out on a yacht with my family. My first flight is delayed, then it's canceled, then we miss our connecting flight. <laughs> so now I'm either gonna miss this special thing that my son did for me for my birthday, yes. or I gotta buy all new tickets for my whole team to get back home from this event. So I bought all new tickets, cool. Yeah. But I decided- How much were, how much were all them tickets? I don't. I think they were about seven thousand dollars. I say it wasn't twenty five. No, because they were the same day. Like we get on the plane yeah, right for now. Sure. Right. Okay. So, I decided on that flight. I am never doing this again. I will never get on a commercial airliner again unless really? I'm flying overseas and I have my own bedroom. Like that's the. No, I'm not doing it. I don't care how much it costs. Like I just made a decision. I'm done. I hate being hassled. I hate being inconvenient. Mm. I hate it. Like almost as much as I hate people telling me what to do. So I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> so I, fortunately for me, I've got some connections. I know a guy, he's got a jet. Call him on the phone. Hey, I got an event coming up in two weeks. Can you hook us up with a jet to fly from Tampa to Las Vegas and back for me and like four other people? And I'm thinking it's not going to cost more than twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. I'm willing to pay that. I'm going to make a couple million dollars when I go to Las Vegas anyway. Not gambling, mm -hmm. speaking. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Okay. He's like, yeah, but it's going to cost sixty thousand dollars. I said, <clears throat> it's going to cost how much? <laughs> and he said to me, Yeah, you got to put your big boy pants on. You're going to fly private. You ain't like that. Oh, now, now I'm like, no, no. Because that indicates that you're currently wearing little boy pants. I don't, I only got big boy pants. <laughs> Book the jet. <laughs> right? So now I'm like, I decided before I knew the details mm -hmm. that I'm only going to fly private from now on. I had no idea how much it cost. Well, on a light jet, it cost about six, between six and $7,000 an hour. On a heavy jet, it cost between eleven and $12,000 an hour. Okay, cool. But I already decided. It's not the same as choosing. When you decide, you cut yourself off from any other possibility. I am not going back. Mm. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to create an offer. There's a lot of things you can do with $500. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes. Well, really nice shoes are about double $500. Um, you could buy a course where you can learn something for $500. But I have something better for you to do with the $500. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the year. I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, a successful community, and a successful life all the way around. 
But I want to share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one-on-one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I want to meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. Every single month we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month and every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic and I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot. Mm. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to create an offer to pay for this new expensive decision, expensive decision. So I created an offer called a VIP day. And I let people pay me $200,000 to come spend the day with me. I like how you said that. I let people pay $200,000. Yes. When I created that within six months, we sold, are you ready for this? 18 of them. That's $3.6 million. You can put your phone down. Okay. That year, plus, I started charging, because I that's for me to fly with me and my family when I want to go somewhere. I started charging people when they wanted me to come speak. I started charging them my private jet fee, which is 11000 an hour, plus whatever my fees are, right? Hmm. Because oh, I was going to ask you to speak at Podcast Summit, but... I need to make an offer to get married. That's okay. You can make an offer and then pay for it. I'll show you how in a minute. For sure. Okay. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Every, it all costs the same amount, right? Yeah, let's go. It's, 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 pri the price of anything is irrelevant for the rest of your life after I break this down to you. Let's go. Okay. So I ended up doing $3.9 million in sales because of, with this offer. Mm -hmm. You know how much my private jet travel cost me for the next year? $1.7 I generated 3.9, I paid 1.7. Hear me now, Shans. I literally made $2.2 .2 million profit because I decided I wasn't flying commercial anymore. Ah, like that. So I paid for it according to my creativity. I created an offer to pay for the jet. By the way, that's the same thing I used to pay for this bottle of water, I created an offer pay for the water, to pay for my Rolls Royce, to pay for a Mercedes, to pay for a vacation, the Cayman Islands or wherever I want to go. I create an offer. Now here's what's cool. If I paid for things with money I've exchanged my time for, I pay the money. I don't have the money anymore. I've already worked for the money. I don't have the time anymore. So now I have is a thing. And once I use the thing, I don't even have the thing anymore. But when I pay for things with offers, I make the money. I made more money than the thing cost. So I paid for the thing and I still have money. But guess what else I still have? I still have the offer. Mm, so you can pay for more things. First off, I want to tell you, I want to admit something to you. Okay, admit. Throughout most of this story, I had a very poverty mindset. Okay? I had a <laughs> poverty mindset. I, I love you, no Shane. way we're going to justify this only fly or a private jet thing. And then you said... Yeah, this is, and then you said the $200,000, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. I would have never created that offer if I wouldn't have made that decision. I wouldn't have created the offer. If I hadn't made that decision. That's what I'm saying, I had a poverty mindset. Right. But I, I don't have it anymore, so I'm right. delivered. Right. <laughs> I didn't even realize we were doing a delivery. I'm delivered. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's what's cool though. The la like when I sold it, the last time I sold it for 200,000 was in October of 2022. I said, this is the last time you ever get this this price from raising the price to 350000 mm. We've sold 10 more at 350000 That's another $3.5 million. <sighs> I've generated over $7 million from this offer. I've spent less than $4 million flying private since I created the offer. So literally, because I made a decision to do something that costs more money, and I paid for it according to my creativity... Mm -hmm. Right? Because of that, 
I am actually now richer than I would have been had I decided to de- buy something based on how much it cost. Right? It changes everything. It changed everything. everything. If I'm made in the image of God, and God is creative, if I desire to do something or have something, what better way than to create an offer to pay for it? I'm coming to an event, bro. I'm coming to the event. You're coming to the event? I'm coming 100%. And the event's called Offer Mastery Live. I'm coming. Okay. I'm I, seriously. Yeah. But, but, but you can see clearly. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you the rest of the story. There's more. But wait, there's, <laughs> there's more. more. There's more story. If you buy a VIP day, that's $350,000. I created another offer that's a million dollars. And they get four VIP days in one year. So they get a discount. It's not a discount. It's more of a, an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> they, pay, they end up paying less. So, so I've sold three of those. You know what's crazy about this story? What's that? Maybe two years ago, mm-hmm. you were taught, for one, and I don't know if it's the same, but your mastermind was maybe yeah. 55000 I mm-hmm. never invested that much money in anything. <laughs> Not even when I bought my house. I didn't put 55000 down. That, right? right. But made millions. Incredible. But you said, I'm, you said, I have a million dollar offer. And oh, then yeah. at that time, yeah, I did have. I was like, yo, who? It, it wasn't the same million buy this? But I think he was like, no, no, nobody got it. Nobody got it yet. At that point, nobody bought it. But now, in, like in the last, like in, in one month, right at the end of the year, last year, three people bought it. A million dollars. So I've made over $10 million since I created my VIP day as a direct result of that. And I've only spent less, less than $4 million. Yeah, bro. So what people get for this? Million. Talk, for, talk. for the million dollar offer, for the three hundred fifty thousand dollar. Let's offer. start with the three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, offer. so I, I, I charge like this is real. This is not some random number. Forty thousand dollars an hour to coach somebody. So you want, hey, Myron, can I talk? Can I pick your brain for an hour? Yeah, it's forty thousand dollars. Unless you have a podcast. Well, there you go. I saw what you just did there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dee, remind me to send me an invoice. <laughs> How long have we been here? Oh yeah, this is like we're 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 up to sixty grand already. Let's go. Let's keep this thing going. Like, yeah. Um, so I charge forty thousand dollars an hour um, for coaching. Cool. So they get eight hours. Mm-hmm. Plus, they get an interview on my YouTube channel. Okay. Plus, every now and then they get to do masterminds in the sky with me. So if I'm going somewhere for business, my VIPs, they can go with me. And I'll teach them really cool stuff while we're on the plane. All right, real quick. So I don't charge $40,000 an hour. Why not? Well, because I didn't, because you didn't tell me that it's cool to charge $40,000 an hour. So I'm do that. <laughs> You're David so, Chow. Yeah, absolutely. And I was actually going to ask you, because sure. when we were talking, he was like, yo, I'm going to fly in. I'm going to be on a podcast. And I was like, yo, cool. Let's do it. And I was going to ask him when we got off the phone too early if I could be on your podcast too. Because. I don't have a podcast. Oh, you I mean, mean like I, on my yeah, YouTube Yeah, channel? yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. You want, what, you want a VIP day? Let's go. I got you. <laughs> it's a VIP day. <laughs> yeah, you do. No, no. I no. do. I do. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, no. It's almost like an exchange type thing. It's not an exchange, but what? No, it's. I mean, that's fine. But, but hear me though. Hear you me. Say it's fine. Hear, 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 hear him. Hear, 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 it's fine that you think that's an exchange. <laughs> Let's be clear. I okay. love this man. Okay. So, but watch this though. Watch this. Yeah. Watch this. I went to a mastermind. I'm there. Me and Jose, a video guy. Some of my VIPs flew from where they live. One from Houston. The other one from Colorado. Mm-hmm to fly with me from Tampa to Idaho. Right. And we mastermind in the sky, right? I'm coming back, they were staying. I'm not staying. My VIPs were staying. Okay, cool. All right. So I told some people to mastermind, hey, if you need to get back to Florida, you wanna come on my jet, um, pay me $25,000 and you can fly back with me and I'll teach you how to get paid to fly private. Okay, cool. They paid, three people paid me $25,000. I got paid $75,000 
by people who wanted to come home with me and learn how to get paid to fly private. And like one guy had to fly from Boise to Seattle and then back to Tampa and it would have taken him all day. Or you can get on the jet with me and we'll be there in three hours. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll show you how to do what I do. And so you don't have to be inconvenienced by it. We will inconvenience you at our convenience airlines anymore. So, <laughs> so I got paid 75,000 extra dollars for taking a trip that I was going to take anyway. And all I was going to do on the plane was sleep. And now I've got some interesting people to talk to about some interesting stuff. Yeah. Like figure out a way to turn expenses into profit centers. Your life will never be the same. Figure out a way to turn expenses into profit into centers. Profit centers. Yeah, you've already done that. I mean, you take the studio, you bought the building, you had it renovated, bought all this equipment, it's an expense. Mm -hmm. but because you also rent it out, it's also a profit center. Yes. Right. Well, so I don't have an entirely poverty mindset. This is good. Oh, no, not at all. Not even close. I mean, in you sense, still, but no, it's not even that you have a poverty mindset. It's that you just still have remnants in your mind of when you did have a poverty mindset, <laughs> right? There's still stuff, that, there's still thoughts that you've never, that you haven't thought about yeah. since you don't live that way anymore. You, so you've never just gone in, oh yeah, I can delete that. Uh, I don't need that anymore. That's not serving me. I mean, you've just not gone and gotten rid of it. Like mm. I, I know from experience, not, not theoretically, I know from experience how terrible of an idea it is to make a decision not to do something because of the price of a thing. I agree with that. Instead, make the decision on whether or not the thing's worth it. Because poor people ask how much does it cost, but rich people ask how much is it worth. I like that. And like because, that. to me, not being inconvenienced by commercial airlines anymore was so valuable to me, I decided before I knew how much it would cost, I'm only flying private from now on, and then I just figured out what offer I can create that pays for it. Got it. So Offer Mastery Live. Offer Mastery Live. Um... And can they you can tell go, me about it? Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be three days, May twenty first, twenty second, twenty third. It's gonna be about two thousand people, Tampa, Florida, May twenty first, twenty second, twenty third at the JW Marriott Water Street. And I've got some of my students are gonna be speaking. I'm gonna speak probably six times. So I'm the main speaker, obviously. I've got Daniel Priestley, one of my favorite authors, the author of of um, key person of influence and oversubscribed coming all the way from the UK. The dude is brilliant. Wow. Um, I don't know if you saw his interview on Diary of a CEO or not. It was really good. I'll go check it out for sure. Um, and then my man, Dr. Benjamin Hardy, the co author of 10X is Easier and 2X, The Gap in the Game. He's speaking, and then a bunch of my students are speaking. It's going to be, it's going to be the most game changing, life changing event potentially that you've ever gone to. So, Offer Mastery Live. First off, um, we've got a website, socialproofoml. Yes. Social, socialproofoml.com. Can somebody real quick go to um, go to socialproofoml.com. Sure, yeah. yeah, it's there. Make sure it's, it's, make sure it's, it's up. It's, Didi's already I checked. know this is, my, this, this, this is my way of getting them to use that link. Because yeah. if you're going anyway, use my link, okay? Yeah, Just, use David's link. It's, this is the partnership economy. That part. However, I'm going. So like 100%, what will we learn at Offer Mastery Live? Because, and, and is it the 300,000 to go or? No, it's not 300,000, no. No, it's. I mean, you, you can't, can't say it like that because you might have an event that costs 300,000. Oh, I'm not opposed <laughs> to having an event that costs 300,000. <laughs> right. Like I'm not opposed to that, but this event doesn't cost 300,000. This event, like I'm literally going to break down over those three days the four different types of offers that you must master if you want to make millions and millions upon millions of dollars. The four different types, types of, of offers. offers. What yes. are they? Lead generation offers. Okay. Lead conversion offers. Okay. Customer ascension offers. Yep. And customer retention offers. Hmm. Those are the four types of, like literally, it's what has helped us build an eight figure business part time the mastery of those four offers. Eight figure business, part-time, with zero dollars spent on ads. Zero dollars spent on ads? I spent no money on ads in almost two years. None, really? zero, nothing. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of wild. You know what, I see you on ads, but they're like ClickFunnels ads. They're somebody else's ads. And I'm like, it's my real on ClickFunnels ads. Yeah, they pay, they pay to put me on ads, <laughs> but I don't pay, yeah, yeah. Well, I be seeing it, I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. 
Okay. In three days. This is going to be an experience. Three days. It's going to be. It's going to be like unlike anything you've ever experienced. It's going to rearrange the furniture in your head so well that you won't even know your way around in your own mind. It'll be great. I love this. Yeah, me too. It's going to be so much fun. This. this is good. This was a great conversation, bro. Well, we have. Great you came at me a little strong though a couple of times. I'm just saying. You gotta saying. keep it interesting, man. Okay, all right. I ain't mad at you, but I was ready for you. <laughs> gotta keep it interesting. This, yeah, this, um, yes, the furniture in my head has definitely been rearranged, and I appreciate you coming by. Yeah, man, it was my pleasure, bro. Yeah, this was this was in- awesome, and I'm about to just go create an offer. If you don't, I'm, I'm why, like, why not? I'm gonna create. If you don't an create offer. an offer, I'm coming to get your family and taking them to safety. <laughs> Which means if I don't have an offer, they're in danger. Yeah. <laughs> that part. Don't out deep me. Let me live with that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's see, y'all. Social proof OML. Hey, listen, somebody throw it in the chat, man. Um, are y'all three different ticket levels, and it will be a sold out event. So, just so people know, like last year, we promoted OML for two and a half weeks. It was only 600 people, but we were completely sold out. Time the events in two and a half weeks. By the time the event started, we had a waiting list of 275 people who couldn't get in. I had friends of mine calling me, hey man, can you get me a ticket to your event? Dude, sold out. Like, I don't do scarcity tactics. Sold out means sold out. I can't get my mom and them in. Wow. Right? It's sold out. They're like, you've heard of these people called fire marshals? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yo, um, and this is an offer, and I'll give you an extreme 100% discount. Don't worry. Oh, thank you. So here's my offer. Uh-huh. And I've been thinking about this. I know you have. I'm, um, people who have events, I think it's important at the end of the event that we get to hear from the person at the end of the event, but not at the very end and not a keynote, but a conversation, a conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay. I should interview you at the end of the event and entertain questions like almost either day. That's two. an interesting thought. It's a really, really good idea because you never really get to, we prepare what we're going to like deliver and get the information, but like putting a button on it and then being able to have that person's f- thoughts flow out. I love how you how think, bro. Feel. I love how you think. It's really fascinating. Yeah, I'm open. I'm open to that conversation. I'll have that conversation with um, my executive yeah. team, and and I'll give you a discount. <laughs> Amazing. But you're the only person I'm going to give this 100 percent discount to. Yeah, 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 this is, yeah, this is <laughs> wow. you got help, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. We've yeah. been listening. We're taking yeah. notes here. Yeah, that's what's up. As a, as a team up. and as a unit. Yeah, that part. Are you are you speaking at the event? No? Didi's brilliant. I know. Okay. Yeah. She is. Yeah, it's good. Okay, all right. So can I, can I what do you think they're going to say? Yes. I don't know. I've, I can't. I don't make like I have a. You seat. do make this decision. I do. I definitely don't. If you wanted to make this decision, you tell the team this is what we're gonna do. Would I? Would I do that? A hundred percent. If yo, would I do? Don't that? even. Yes. Here's the thing, because you have imagination, and your team knows you have imagination when you have an idea. That's why she can't answer because thou shalt she not. She can't lie. answer. She can't First answer. Though. She can't answer because you're talking too much. That. <laughs> Thou shalt not lie. Uh-huh. If pull a, pull a word in there. <laughs> if you wanted to make a decision, you said, I think this would be a really good idea, your team would say, you know what? You're right. Let's do it. We will have that conversation. What do you think, dude? We will have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it ain't too much for me because I was grown when he was graduating from high school. You started that junk too, by the way, but Oh yeah, in 2008, I was graduating from high school. Whatever, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, bro. I, I'm having, I'm having a good time. I don't know about y'all. I'm having a good time today. Indeed. Um, but yes, Myron, thank you so much. So, socialproofoml.com. Get your tickets. Get your okay, tickets. get your tickets. Get your tickets. Now, and if I'm being 100 percent honest, I didn't know about the event until today, mm-hmm. and I decided to go to the event, and then I was like, Hey, Myron. Can we create a link 
And he was like, cool. I just like, just full transparency. I was oh, like, yeah. yo, I want to go. And I know the value of what you teach. And I think some people are afraid to make offers. They don't know what type of offers. Oh, yeah. Offers suck. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you learn how to, like, the secret sauce, it's a wrap. For sure. Forget, forget about it. Mm. Forget about it. Yo, real quick. If I would have offered my services at a premium, would you take it more seriously? Anybody who offers me services at a premium, I take it more seriously. Mm. But this doesn't mean I take it. immediate discount. Oh, that's that's no. I would have given you the same answer. It doesn't matter. You could have told me it's hundred grand. Same answer. Like it's not. I don't make those decisions anymore. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. That's real talk. I feel that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Listen, y'all. Uh, Social proof OML. Uh, get your tickets now, man. Uh, thank you so much for thank coming Thank you. By. Always a pleasure, bro. I'm I'm really going to turn it up after this conversation. Let's go. I'm Let's excited. turn it up. And so uh, make sure, any oh, any closing words? Anything you want to leave us with? Yeah, um, it's so interesting that um, when I first got started in business, I got started in this financial services company called A.L. Williams. Mm -hmm. And Art Williams used to say this phrase, and I didn't understand it back then. It makes so much sense now. He says, life will give you what you'll fight for, mm. or life will give you what you accept. Like so the that. question then becomes on our part, what? Am I gonna fight for what I desire, or am I gonna accept what's left over? That's good. Yeah. So, I that's it. I appreciate you, man. Make sure y'all follow this man. Uh, brilliant, brilliant individual and uh, is responsible for helping uh, lots and lots of people change their financial life, not just a little bit, but by great margins. So make sure you do yourself a favor. Go follow Mr. Myron Golden and also go to socialproofoml.com. I will see you all in Tampa at Offer Mastery Live. Let's and go. Lastly, lastly, go get you some social proof, meaning go build something. But it's your responsibility to come back to your community and teach them how you did it. It's the only way our community grows. We mm, are so out good. Of here. So Peace. good. Peace out. Great stuff, Shant. <laughs> if you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.